Willow Creek Springs presents Healthy Living with your host, Joe Grumbine. Well, hello and welcome to the Healthy Living Podcast brought to you by me stumbling over my tongue in Willow Creek Springs. Uh, today, I have with me again, Richard McEwen and uh, with Yellow Footprint Fitness and the PTSD program and Willow Creek Springs and Gardens of Hope. Lord knows our, our lives are becoming intertwined. Uh, this is a podcast that is about healthy living and everything that might be connected to it. I think it's the one thing that we all have in common is we want to live healthy, right? We want to live a long life. We want to we want to experience the best life has to offer. So, Richard, uh, how are you doing today? Good. We uh, started the this morning, probably about four thirty this morning. The phone just started beeping and <laughs> going off. So we we decided to get up and get our early morning workout because the way the day was going to go, we wouldn't have time later. And you know how that goes. Later on in the day, you don't you're already tired and the day's over, and then you still have to you know make time for yourself. That's usually whenever you don't make time for yourself, you put it off. And then that creates the habit. And that's what you want to break is. Uh, you know, that. there's something about an early morning workout, too, that I think is powerful. Like I get up in the morning. My workout means I'm out working in the yard. That's 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 a workout for me. So, for example, this morning, like I've got some people coming over to tour my the gardens today and of course my wife gets all wigged out got to have everything cleaned up and <laughs> put things right no and, checklist you know, yeah 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 so <laughs> it's like you know it's like when the when the sergeant comes to inspect the barracks you know everybody's got to have your cots all tight and your yeah. everything has to be right because they're going to come check well it's like that too you, you want to always put your best foot forward but i had blown the place down last night so I, in my eyes everything's tidy but there's always some things that I need to work on. But also, as we're getting into summer, my creek levels are going down and I have fish in my creek and I have to keep digging the sand out so that the water is there for my fishes. I have this built-in responsibility that says, you're going to throw sand today. And <laughs> so that's my workout is I get to throw sand. And, you know, I I like that one uh, post you made with you digging a hole in the sand. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I, I, I do mountain climbers and I dig with my hands too. Uh -huh. I did the push ups and I just ended up in a fighting hole. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. It was fun. <laughs> there's something to me about getting up early and strapping that light on and getting outside in the morning. This morning, while I was walking around, sort of evaluating what I was going to do, I had a great experience, something I've never had before. I walked up. And there was an owl that was sitting on the ground, a big barn owl, down by the creek. And I think he must have been getting some water, maybe eating something. I don't know. That's awesome. but I walked up on him and he flew off. But I've never seen, like, I see owls a lot, but usually it's at night and they're off in the trees. But this guy was sitting on the ground and uh, he kind of looked at me. He was, he was like, all right, I got to go. And uh, that was really great. Like, that kind of stuff would only happen you know, at five o'clock in the morning, that stuff never happens, you know, at right. three in the afternoon. Exactly. <laughs> and one of the, um, I think one of the things that sparked the program, you know, other than just me posting it, because at the time I was going through healing myself, you know, so it was like a connection with everyone else, uh, making, you know, post what I did daily. And that's pretty much like, the group that I got connected to, uh, it's a SEAL Grinder PT. It's run by a uh, former Navy SEAL, uh, Brad McLeod. And uh, we got connected, you know, in that correlation of, you know, the mindset uh, on the on me doing the push-ups. So once connected, um, it was pretty much like mentally how things I thought about and put into the workout. And pretty much like if you think of daily life we go to work we're, we're we work for somebody else we're on a computer everything's you know and we rely on our tools at work to take care of us like say for instance a computer you know it's 
every time you access it, it pulls files in different directions and things like that, just like your thoughts during the day. It's being pulled in different directions all day long. And your mind is in back in that nice, compressed, you know, clear thought process that it starts in the morning because all the files and everything are having to be shot everywhere, you know, to correlate and function during the day. So when the computer goes down, we have to defrag it is what we're taught. Right. And what it does is it puts everything, it takes all the trash out, puts all, every file back into its original form so that it can function and run smooth. Right. So, that's one thing we don't do to ourselves. And that's part of like what the push-ups do is it helps restore the protein in the brain. It's which is the BDNF is the basic nootrophic uh, neural factor. I think it's what it's called. And okay. when your cortisol levels and serotonin levels are low, your protein in, in the, from the pituitary gland isn't functioning at its normal levels to produce all the hormones. So therefore you have a, um, what do you call it? A defi deficiency in your endocannabinoid system. So how do you do that? You defrag your mind. And that's pretty much what push-ups do is it defrags the entire uh, body, your mind. Body, so. Oh. so I created, you know, a def defrag your mind and it was put into the thousand push-up program. We had t-shirts that, you know, were going pretty good. And, but that's just like the different mindset and that's how it connected other people was like, you know, you're sitting there scrolling and something bring, you know, get your attention. And it's because of the mindset somebody else has, you know, you bring that vibration to the same level and then you start to function. So the mindset I had in healing and the programs and things that I created during my time of, you know, struggling like everyone else, it created that mindset for someone else to follow. So that's pretty much where we are is we need to defrag ourselves so that we can connect our higher chakras, you know, and ascend upwards instead of downwards. And I think that's the whole process of learning it. Uh, even if you learn something new, you know, it could be done on the same platform, but it's a different mindset. So you raise to a higher level of vibration and that disappears. It has no platform for it to, to, to lay on anymore. So therefore you're neurologically the BDN up um, in your brain has restored to a level to where it can function clear. So you know, it's interesting about that whole concept. I think there's, there's a lot of ways to accomplish what you're talking about that defragging and, you know, part of it is involved in sleep when you get the right kind of sleep, you know, uh, your body has what's called a glymphatic system. And that's where that only happens, though. Number one, if you haven't eaten right before you go to sleep, which so many of us do, and it wrecks our whole glymphatic system because it causes your body to be busy doing other stuff like digesting. Yeah. And 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 but what that does is it actually what washes away the um the amyloid plaque that builds up and it 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 does like what you're talking about it kind of resets everything and it and it and it starts your morning clean most people don't get the right sleep to activate that another thing people do is uh you know meditation and and breathing work some people say they get that experience from running i know years ago when i was a kid i used to run miles and and uh, before i busted my leg and i can remember i get in a spot you know after about a mile or two and 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 you get in a zone where you're breathing right and you're just moving you know and like you you don't feel the pain of it and you just feel the motion and you're you, you get like what you're saying and i i can see when you when you get your push-ups into a rhythm where you're able to do enough of them, like most people, I suspect in the beginning, it's just a struggle to get those whatever they can do done. And there's not a lot of period of time that you're doing it because you're 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 weak and you're getting stronger. But once you get yourself to a point where you're you're able to snap out those sets, and all of a sudden you're getting now you can get into that place where you can go, oh wow, there's a place here that I couldn't get to. But now I'm here. Yes, exactly. And pretty much, I wanted to break it down to where a level to anyone, 
whether they're you know struggling from an injury or just struggling with life or just they want to get better in shape just anyone can connect to the program and how do you get that level so taking away the mindset of a thousand it's you know that's pretty much like a veteran type program because you know we've gone through hell and back so we know how to pretty much participate in within that area so there's slow twitch muscles fibers and large twitch large twitch you, you know your, your chest your thighs things like that your slow twitch muscles are what connect all the muscle fibers and everything from the bone to the muscles and everything so that they can function so if you're you're weak in an area say you're bench pressing and you start shaking you, you know it's you're not weak it's just the slow twitch muscles that connect everything are weak and they're not able to sustain the larger weight on top of the muscle so how do you correct that it starts with your brain and how do you do that it's slow increments you know you don't want to do a, a full repetition you want to do a half repetition so the muscle is always under tension well you can do the same thing in a push, push up is you always push your your, your brain and push up program it's always going to be under tension so the body is going to shake it's going to want to give up because it can't keep up with the mind so we want to break it down to where because studies have been done in universities across the world we've researched everything you can do too which is one of the things anything i say or do i always say you know research you know absolutely somebody else's word you know just because you know they're a star or something like that you know Mike we're Tyson, all made out of the first, same stuff right but we're all made out of stardust so there is that exactly but, we all have that within ourselves i always encourage though anybody who's listening to any guest on this show or or me or anybody is you know verify for yourself double check oh, you know, yeah. hopefully oh, you're yeah. listening to this and you're hearing multiple people resonating with a concept that says oh well you know this is coming from another point of view another point of view but i keep hearing that same sort of message that's the truth that i'm hoping to tap into through this show but always double check and if you find something different bring it to us let us know because you know we just want to know the truth really yeah and really the truth especially nowadays uh pretty much mental health is has taken a drastic decline instead of an advance and you know where we are as, as smart as we are i think that everyone is struggling and when you go to a doctor 20 years ago you used to be able to walk into a doctor and and would listen to you what's going on and yeah. without a prescription would be able to take care of you right plus well, did one-on-one -on -one interaction and it isn't now it's replaced with pharmaceutical medications and that's what they what they're doing to everyone and that changes you here yeah and it, it's just you know that's what they wanted to do to me is nothing but pills i right. break down they saw the x-rays i mean i could post the pictures it's just crazy that you know medical treatment that i had to go through you know for doing my job you know right. and that pretty much put the platform for everyone because you know i wasn't in the military i was a civilian you know my ptsd my battlefield was on the job as a law enforcement officer you know, and whenever that shut down and I needed the help, you know, there was no hand to, you know, to grab me up out of that hellhole. Nobody had your back. It, exactly. You know, and which, you know, it, is OK, you know, and hey, you're here now. That's what matters. Right. I mean, you know, exactly. we all got to this place through our own journey and and it, it has to do with choices we made sit, situations that happen sometimes just dumb luck you know sometimes shit just falls out of the sky and lands on you um but we're <laughs> here and that's the thing that i think it's, it's so important to remember like every day you make a choice to do whatever it is you choose like today i decided to wake up at 4 15 in the morning and get up and get myself ready and i was out there by quarter to five outside with the shovel in my hand i chose that today some days i wake up and i'm like i'm not gonna do this today i'm just gonna sleep and i wake up at six o'clock in the morning and i feel extra rested and i say well my body didn't want to do that today so i listen to it and other times i push through it and i say i don't want to do it but i'm going to do it anyways and each of those pathways take you to a different place Exactly. And there's a different lesson at each of those places. They all can be valuable. It's just what we do with it. And I think that your program here 
is ex exemplifies that because every day you're going to make a choice to follow this program or not. You're going to make a choice to 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 advance in this program or not. You're going to make a choice, and and that in itself, the act of making good choices, that is, I believe, as powerful as the actual motion of those push-ups, because first you have to decide to do them. And once you decide to do them, then you just do them. And and I think it's the deciding parts harder in a lot of ways for a lot of people than the actual doing. And I think you build up a, you build up a mental strength every time you decide the right thing, every time you stick to what you said you were going to do, every time you build integrity, it's just like working out. And and it's just like life too. You screw up one time and it sets you back a month. You know, I mean, it's just like it takes you every single day to build it, one day to throw it all back. Yes, exactly. So how we wanted to do is to break it down for everyone so that everyone can, you know, start, you know, like I said, you know, I didn't just was able to be able to do push-ups just right off the get-go with my injury. I had to start on my knees, you know, basically crawl, you know, walk and then run. So how do you break that down in, a, in, a, in the program is uh, three phases. So uh, we, we're going to work on your slow twitch muscles first to build the large twitch muscles so that they intertwine and work together. How do you do that is you start, start in slow increments. So if you want to start the program, it starts with uh, it, you just start and do as many push-ups as you can. It, you know, if you got to do it against a wall, you know, like behind you, just against the wall, push your feet out to where you can push or, you know, on your knees, however you got to do, you can start to do them, you know, that's, you know, your privacy, you know, how you got to start, you know, and do your plan. Let me ask you this, because so, I'm planning on starting this program and I'm trying to get myself in a place where I know the road I'm going on before I start it, because I don't want to, I don't want to walk into unknown and going, oh, I, so the question is, okay, I can do push-ups, I can do all the way down, all the way up. I can do all the way down, all the way up with a vest on. I can do whatever. I I can do so many. There's a, what I don't know what number it is today. There's been days when I could knock out fifty in a punch, and 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 other days, you know, I can do a hundred with a vest on. But other days I can do ten, and I'm just like I got nothing. Yeah. The question is just assuming that I'm I'm starting from a fairly low point, not a lot of strength. Whether I do or don't doesn't matter. I don't know. Would you say it's easier or better to start out from a softer position and see how many you can do, or to start out from the hardest position and see how many you can do first? Well, if you can do if you can do one, the the goal is for you know anyone that wants to start, you know, including yourself, is the goal is to be able to push yourself till you can do at least forty push-ups in a row, because if the statistics say that if you can do 40 push-ups in a row, you're 96% less chance of having any cardiovascular disease, heart disease, any any type of you know brain disease, like Alzheimer's, things like that. So you think about that. That's 40, just 40 push-ups. Or you can think of, you know, in a different number is if you're trying to get to the gym, I gotta do 40 push-ups or get to it, play with that number. Because 4% of your day, when you wake up to sundown, you go to bed, 4% of your day is only one hour. So 4% of that day should be you. Because the rest of the day is, is being snatched away from you by everybody else. So if you don't give yourself that one, that 4%, that's where you're at, is because you're not making time for yourself. You know, we have to make time for ourselves. We have to be able to work on ourselves with no help. You know, you can cut your finger and look at it and it's going to heal itself. The body is teaching you, I can heal my own self. So we need to tell the brain that, you know, reteach the brain that. And so 40, just worry about 40 push-ups. Don't worry about a thousand, you know, that's beast mode, you know, Navy SEAL status, you know, that's just, you know, that's a level that is, a, is approachable, you know, achievable, you know, we don't want to start there. We want to start at a basic level, just like basic training, you know? How do we learn that level? You start with the basics, with what works. And that is just 
However, you can do them on your knees, you can do them against the wall, but build till you can do 40. Why? Because that's going to rebuild your limbistic system. It's going to refire your endocannabinoid system to fire correctly and rebuild your BNF, BDNF in your protein in your brain, which uh, if I'm correct, then if you can do 40 push-ups, the 96th percentile of, of not having any cardiovascular disease, it also stops the brain from aging and being able to heal to make new growth. So, so would you say... 40 push-ups, what it can do here. So would you say if, if let's just say I wake up tomorrow morning and say, okay, I'm going to snap out 40 and I get down and I, I, I got to 35 and I'm start quivering and shaking. Then do I sit and wait and rest for a couple minutes and then snap out the other five or. Yeah. So like your 40, your 40 pushups, that's your goal. That's the thousand, one to a thousand, right. you know, the four, you know, so you got to go from one push up to 40. That's, that's your workout. So however, in your mind, you want to build your ladder. Okay. Into that. That's up to you then, really. Right. It's up to the individual. You know, it, it, the program is just like a layout, you know, like you can open a muscle and fitness magazine or a workout magazine. And these big old guys, they post their workouts. Right. You're not going to be able to say, oh, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to go to the gym and do that. Right. No, everybody's unique. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to build to that. So that's how I used to do it when I was little is how do I get, you know, to that mentality mentality to what, where my body could show that I can handle anything is so, I take it and break it down so that it works for me is there a period of time that's best like say somebody's starting out and they haven't done a push-up since they were in high school and now they're you know a little overweight and they're a little flabby they've been sitting behind a desk for too long and they get down and they do four push-ups and they're like oh geez I'm weak it's I suck I can only do four push-ups and then so so you did four push-ups how long, like, is there a window or do you give yourself all day to hit that 40 or do you, what's, what's your thoughts? Yeah. It, when I first started it, I would break it down to the thousand and I would do some in the morning, some in the evening, you know, break it into two cat, categories instead okay. of a full thousand. You and know? you rest during the day. Right. Because I'm also having to deal with pain and, and discomfort and right. you know, everything from being injured and not doing anything it's just like you're just the first day you, you're back to working out the next day you're gonna be really sore why because you want to push yourself and you're over exerting your muscles and they're not used to that so they make you pay for it the next day so don't worry be worried about the soreness the, it's going to create in any workout because that's showing you that then your body wants doing something if you yeah, get sore, that means okay now, yeah, that's that's it's working, it's yeah, totally working. yeah. Oh, so I like that's it. good, yeah. You know, and that, that's the discomfort is is motivation. You know, okay. Well, you know, there's a, I, I I think it's endorphins of some kind that get released when you do when you get sore because I know that anytime you do something that makes you sore, when you're sore the next day or whenever, then hours later, it feels good to feel sore. Like there's yeah. a there's a, a feeling of accomplishment that says, oh, I'm sore. That means I'm probably going to be a little stronger in a couple of days, you know? It's like a runner's high. Right. Yeah. You just, you, you end up uh, feeling overwhelmed with just your, I think it's your cortisol levels are, are, are balanced. And it releases the, um, the hormone into your bloodstream. I think it's your cortisol levels. From either exercise or running, I know that uh, the pituitary gland is more active because it has to produce more hormones through the bloodstream for all your other organs and that. So whenever you're you're out of breath, and that's another thing we want to cover is a lot of people, even even top bodybuilders or anybody, I've seen uh, one thing, my injury with my back, you know, it curves pretty much like a a question mark, you know, from here goes this way and down so how did I straighten that you know what well, was individual I worked on the other side so that it would pull it and balance it and that's where in the mind needed to have the CBD and the right uh, ingredients to where I can 
have my plan and be able to work it. So working through the discomfort, that's where you want to stay. As long as you feel a little discomfort, you're, you're building, you're, you're, you're climbing. So that's the difference between pain and discomfort. You know, a, a little cut on your finger, an ow, that's just discomfort. A lot of people associate that with pain and they, they stop. You know, they yeah, yeah. Well, any healing, you're going to have to go through pain. And any success is followed by understanding the pain. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I, I've broken bones. I've, I've had some injuries that were painful. And, you know, you know, when, when, when you go into shock, then that's your body going, okay, that's pain. And we're not going to really deal with that right now. So we're just going to turn you off for a second. Yeah. And I've had those things happen a few times. And then when you're going through the healing process, that's when the soreness and the discomfort really comes in. Like you, when your body's putting itself back together, it's not particularly pleasant. You know, it starts itching deep inside and, and, and gets real sore and tender and all of these things. And, you know, like you say, it's those discomfort. The pain is when you can't, you, you can't crawl yourself up to the house because you just blew out your knees and ankles. You know, that's, that's, that's a different kind of thing. So I think it's it's important to get yourself to that discomfort spot. Has anybody like I think with push-ups it's a pretty safe exercise. Like it's not like people get injured sometimes lifting weights and doing oh, yeah. crazy things, you know, doing these extreme things where they're you know making big motions with heavy weights and you can slip and twist and break something pretty fairly easily i would think even going through military optical courses things like that you could probably get hurt pretty easily just making bad motions but push-ups i think are a fairly safe exercise in the sense of uh aside from you know just repetition which you've experienced you know wearing your joints out um <laughs> which you know can happen yeah. but aside from that i mean it's not like you're probably not gonna slip a disc or or you know, injure yourself because of a bad push-up. No, push-ups are anybody can do, you know, a, a, a little child to, you know, somebody that's 80 years old, anyone could do, you know, a one, one push-up. And if you can do one push-up, then you can do another. Why? Right. Because your body and mind just showed you, oh, we can do this. You just did it. You, you push yourself past that unknown. I don't know. Can I do this? And then you do a push-up and you go, oh, I just did one. You know, be proud of that. Why? Because that's where you build the next level. You know, it's just like most of uh, veterans, you know, I know a lot of veterans that I've talked to in the past, you know, uh, some of the things that uh, they've told me is like, they'll spend like an hour or two hours or even sometimes all day long, just inside the house, getting ready, dressed, just to go out, just to go to the store. And then get the courage to do it, grab that door and just, you know, shut it and say, nah. And they've spent their entire day wow. to get outside the door, you know? Wow. So how you break that mentality and that's how it breaks it down is it clears your mind, your thought process, because whenever you do anything that's high intensity level, your brain can't concentrate on anything else. Just like if it has an injury. Your, your body and brain isn't thinking about it's got to go to work or my boss is going to be late, you know, mad at me because I'm late, you know, for lunch. No, it's, you're injured. And that's the only focus. You right. Know, you do one thing. You at don't a have time. anything for anybody else if you don't have yourself together. So you got to exactly. if you're broken, you got to make sure you get yourself patched up before you go and try to carry somebody else's jug of water. Exactly. So there's five different ways to start to build your 40. And the reason why I'm doing you want to do them in different positions, different ways, play with your mind. It's like biohacking. You know, what we, what we talked about last time, Joe, like, you know, a lot of athletes are, you know, doing stuff like that is biohacking and things because it regenerates new growth into the brain, right? You know, just the body. Well, how do you do that with pushups? Well, it, it basically, uh, say all the blood and everything is flowing really good through your body. You can't really breathe. And then all of a sudden everything shuts down. And then what do they do? Break those paddles out and they shock you. What it does is it stimulates an electrical bolt all through your system. And then it gives it that charge back to the level it needs to function. What's well, the same thing with the brain. 
once she's doing intensity, you put the intensity level to it, it starts to change the BDNF factors in your, in your brain to where it starts reproducing. It stops aging. So the slow twitch muscles are, are where help you get up off the ground, hold your balance, you know, and especially older, elderly people, that's where you get injured the most is just putting a dish in the dishwasher, you know, and you lean over and all of a sudden, boom, you're falling, you break your hip, things like that. So doing the different positionings teach you to put your body in any position and your mind. So it's close grip. You want shoulder width. Close grip, shoulder width. Shoulder width. And then you want to turn your, your thumbs outward, which pushes your elbows out. This way? Shoulder, shoulder width, yeah. So your so you're shoulder width, and then you take your thumbs and move them towards your navel. Like that? Like that. Okay. And your shoulders are outward. So your shoulders are out when you're pushing down. So when you're when you're pushing up close, your 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 thumbs are pretty much in line. Right. And you want to put you, you know, so it's comfortable for your your wrist, you know. You don't have to put them, you know, like a diamond, but just put them close together. Okay, so they're slightly yeah. slightly pointing towards each other. Right. So you have your close, your regular, which is shoulder width. Okay, you know? and then, and the regular shoulder width is also sort of slightly pointing towards each other. A little, just, just a little. little. And, so and your thumbs are just a little bit, your thumbs are a little bit off of straight across. Correct. Just a the little The reason bit. why I say that is because of the positioning that it puts your your body in that triangle so okay. that in between here and your spine, it's not working. All of it. it is is secure and stable. So you have a foundation pretty much. Okay. But once you keep your foundation, your back straight, that's what it does. Your elbows pushed out as it aligns your spine instead of being crunched. So a lot of people, they're they're crunched and their back is bowed. And okay. That, that so puts, when you're sitting in that sort of plank position, you want to make sure your spine's nice and straight. Right. Like a plank position. Feet, your toes are your feet are together. So you're balancing your on your toes and your hands. So and, and so if that's hard for you, use your knees. You want your back to be kind of straight. You don't want to be all bowed up and down like that. Like, Correct. Like, like a seesaw. So, and when, and whenever you're you're not used to doing push-ups, even though you feel like your back is straight, it's still gonna bow. Of course. It's keeping your diaphragm tight. And your positioning. So your, your hands, where you position your shoulders, is where it's going to depend on the balance of and stability of your spine. Okay. So you got one in close, you got one shoulder, and then you got one. Yeah, it's still you. So it's close grip, sh shoulder width, and then you're going to turn your elbow slightly out so that. Okay, I got you. Out. I got you. Okay. And, and you'll do some. So there's and three. Then you do wide. All wide. you're going to do from shoulder is you're going to take your hand one width out. Okay. So it's just a. Right. Uh, and you, six and inches you, on either side out. Correct. Six inches, whatever. And then the fifth is your hands are straight outward. Whoa. And you're going. And if that is hard, you can just take your hands to where they're. This is as far outward. as you can go. Okay. And you can push. No, wait. Is it outward this way? When you're so you have close this way, you're out, and then you have wide, and then all you're going to do is turn your hands the opposite way. So, so your elbows are curling in. Hang on, I'm wow. going to see how how that works. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I can see it. Whoa! All right, I got you. Yeah. And you can only do if you if you can't go all the way down to a full compressed movement, just do it half. Okay. In fact, work on just half. You so know would I mean? it be better? Say, let's say I, I set out to do forty, and I realize at twenty that I'm not going to get to forty. So would you say do as many as you can all the way, and then when you realize you're not going to do it, cut it to half and get to that forty, or would you just? Say just do as many as you can and and push it as hard as you can and get close to it. Well, if you do if you do set, if you do two push ups as a set, yeah, do twenty sets. Got that, it. That's your that's your forty. Got it. Okay, fair enough. So play with your mind, like like you just said. What what if 
I start and I get to 20 and I, you know, I don't have anything else. You know, I'm burnt out. Just well, stop and do another set of 20. You knew that, you knew climbing that mountain, it didn't work. You know, you, yeah. that battle plan didn't work. Okay. Yeah. Regroup. How do I, how do, do I a get little more switchbacks? Yeah. Right. So you, yeah, you're going to have to play that game in your mind. Okay. You figure it out. Once you do it a few times, you'll figure out where you're at. And then, you know, usually you don't slip back. You only move forward. Generally, it's been my experience. Like exactly. unless you get hurt or something. You, you generally don't, uh, you know, once you, if you hit 40, probably the next time you do it, you can hit 40 again and probably do more. Exactly. So we're running out of time, but I want to, I, I, I'm really enjoying this and I want to, I want to sort of get this to a spot where I, I'm, I'm preparing myself to begin this journey here. And um, so, so you would say like day one, you do this way, day two, you do this way, day three, day four and day five. So you're going to do all, all the ways in five different days, right? Yeah. You probably won't be able to do, you know, all the positions, but work through those five, just, you know, which ones work for you. Oh, this one's easy. You know, all oh, this one really sucks. <laughs> well, no, you want to do the one that really sucks, though, right? sucks. Just put it in the back, you know, as an, as an alternate route, you know? Okay. I know these three out of the five work. So I'm going to build my 40 off these three. Oh, okay. Okay. Really so no you're three. just figuring it out. Which one? And those other three. two will come into a factor by concentrating on what works. You know. So do you, so so you wouldn't think like for me, I would always think that the one that's the hardest is probably the one I should do, because that's the one that obviously I I have a weakness to. Um, you always think the hardest one is never the last one. It's always the first one. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Anything. You know, it, it's always the first step. Okay, good. We're thinking the so, same then. Yeah. Okay. So once so, you get past that one, I, I think I don't have 40 or 39. I got three or four left. Right. You know? So okay. play the numbers small in your head. You know why? Because you control things better. When uh, all you right. Thinking too big. And especially if you have a big project at work or something, all this heat just got dumped on you. You're like, man, how am I going to build this battle plan? You know, so that this is a success, you know? Well, you got to start with yourself first be before you can carry that into your business. Because now, if you don't have that within yourself, how's the workflow? It's now, before we end this, how you are mentally. I I get it. So before we end this, I, we're, we're stretching long and I I, I, I have a, a meeting coming up that I got to get to. But but this is I'm really getting into this. So no, no. But but I want to I want to just throw out a couple of words and maybe you give me a short answer and then we'll dig into it more on the next time. In most workouts, you have consecutive days and you have rest days. Is this something where you take a day off or do you just do this every day, no matter what? Well, yes. If, if you're doing any type of program, you want to follow, you know, the program guidelines, you know? Uh, so it's just like, if, you know, if, if you hold yourself accountable and you want to go to boot camp or join the military, you, you, you can't go there and say, OK, well, I just want to do this on weekends. You know, yeah, boot camp doesn't have days off. Yeah. yeah. So you do you do the program and you graduate the program. Then you can decide, oh, I want to do this. Just I want to run one day a week, you know, instead of every okay, day. So you're doing hours. this every day, no matter what. Right. So okay. when you're good. Yeah. Until you can achieve that goal, of you're 40. Then you then you can rest and give yourself some rest days. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so first thing is hit this one mark, and then you can decide. Okay, I, yeah. I'm gonna take a day off, and then I'm gonna set my next mark. So say like somebody just got out of the military, and they're looking for something to keep them mentally, you know, at the same level, so they don't start deteriorating. Mm -hmm. And they come across say, oh, that thousand pushups, I'm gonna start doing that program, and they yeah. start doing it off the bat. That's works for them. But how do you get to that menta mentality is you have to hold. So if, man, I can only do two push-ups a day. Right. Hey, well, that's your two push-ups. The next day, I'm going to do four. You don't think about that, too, because your body and everything. Right, right. You've already been there. Through. Right. Yeah. So you're already at that at that point. Got so it. Focus about it. All what, right. What's coming next, you know? So I like it. What I do with the 40 is play around with the different positions, you know, yeah. what's for you to where it can help you achieve, but you need to get to your thousand. I like it. Thousand. All right. The final question that I have, and again, just a short, short, we'll get deeper into it. 
But I remember um, in listening to David Goggin's story about when he was stuck on this, this guy was a pull-up monster and he did these, you know, world record pull-ups, but he kept hitting these walls and these barriers and he kept injuring himself. And, and then finally, towards the end of this book, he realized he, he discovered after he was in the hospital for a long time, he couldn't get out of it, that stretching fixed a lot of the problems. What are your thoughts on stretching? Yes, stretching is is very key. I think uh, it's one of the things that's helped, you know, realign, you know, so that I can be, you know, straight again. And okay. uh, I use a inversion table. I do too. I love it. And yeah, it pretty much straightened my hips, you know, back to where because of my spine being all curved, it pretty much aligned things to where you know my hands and everything are you know straight. I can use you know cable bars and everything instead nice. of isolation movements. So I would I would say yeah things like that would would end up working. All right, Richard, I got to cut this one. I'm going to give you the final uh, your your parting shot here. Tell us how to get a hold of you, and uh, this is starting to get interesting. I'm, it's always been interesting, but it's starting to I'm starting to dig into it. Well, we we really want to help everyone and start you know with how you can get to that veteran level, you know, everyone can get to that level, you know, and achieve the goals that they want is uh, align yourself with the right people that have the right mindset to help you get there. I think we're one of the ones that, and that can help you do that and make you understand yourself, you know, and turning a little bit more so that you can function better in the world and not have to worry about the world. So you can reach out at Irish. I had CBD or yellow footprint fitness on Facebook or Instagram. My contact information is in there. So Let's start the journey and we can heal together. Awesome. Thank you so much, Richard. It's always a pleasure. And uh, we'll talk soon. I, yes, my, my guess is if we can do this tomorrow, I want to do it again. Oh, yeah. And we got. All right. I love it. There we go. We're, I'm right yeah. there with you. <laughs> on, the, on the back. We're, I love it. We want things good. So All right, brother. Take care, Joe. We'll talk soon. Thank you. This has been the Healthy Living Podcast brought to you by Willow Creek Springs. And go to our website. Absolutely.